that's how you got the uh, the Dido sample for Stan, right? We were watching a movie. Um, we were watching a movie, right? Actually, I didn't see I didn't see the movie. I saw the I, um, the coming attractions of the movie came on, and they used that song for the trail of the coming attractions, I guess. And it must have came on like four times. And they had it in a loop, you know, this movie and that movie and that movie and that movie, this movie, that movie, that movie. And I heard it like the fourth time I said, I, oh, I didn't say, um, I ran down, no, I didn't run down. I, I shoved the uh, VCR into the tape deck and I taped it. Actually, I took a eight bar, I took her first burst and turned it to an eight bar hook for Eminem. Yeah. So that my tears gonna go there? That actually her first verse. Right. Yeah. So got lucky. And then did you But actually she had she had she had nice production before I, I did anything with her though, actually. I think her and her brother was doing doing stuff. I think her brother was doing her production, which wasn't bad. Yeah, she's got a great and then to find out, I did, in fact, when I sampled it, I didn't know who it was. To find out that she was, um, she had a, um, her song was on Roswell. Remember, WB had a, um, a move, um, a show called Roswell. I remember. Um, um, the the theme song, excuse me, for Roswell is a record. Did you know that? I did not know that. Okay. Did not. Know. Some people probably don't care. So I forgot how I found out that it was Dado. I think Eminem people told me what it, what the record, record it was. Okay. I just wanted to check actually. Basically, and boy did I get one, so I was happy. I hope and imagine you got several. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. Thank God. Yeah, you did. You did well with that one. Yeah, I did, right? Yeah. Thanks, Em. Paid my taxes. A few times. So yeah. um, given that, that that song came out, well, you know, more than a decade after you'd been doing records and you'd had so much success, did you find uh, the wave came back after that record or not really? Now, what wave are you talking about? Like your phone ringing more, people reaching out, wanting more beats, all of a sudden. No, no, not really. No, not not really. Really? No, not really. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad it's it's generating some money. But no, no, to ask. No. That's wild that a huge song like that didn't Well no, that's a different that's a, I think that's a whole you know, the you know, that's the bad luck of my, you know. Yeah, that's a whole nother story that that's a whole nother story. Well, what is the story? No, to the answer the question. Huh? What is that story? What do you mean? This is just, you know, just that I answered the question, but um, no, no, why? Do you have some work for me? You got work for me? No, I'm taking it. No, but um, no, not really, no. I think um, okay, let me just say I guess music change. I don't know. Oh, I suck now. Have you heard my production? That's what happened. I suck now. Yeah. Bullshit. My music is bullshit. You gotta hear it. I couldn't keep up with it. I ran out of drums. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Well, the uh, <laughs> it's funny you're saying that because in uh, 98 with Hard Knock Life and then with Stan in 2000, those are two of the biggest songs definitely in rap of those two years and they mm -hmm. both took yeah, right after that, I ran out of drums. Right, at, you know what I'm saying? That's when the drums hit. Right after those, yeah. Gotcha. That's hilarious. You hear, you hear my stuff lately, huh? That's hilarious. You hear my stuff lately, right? Yeah. You hear my stuff lately? Bullshit. See, can't you tell my luck stopped? <laughs> yeah, right after that, so that's when the luck stopped, man. Hardly. Uh, cool V was telling me about when when uh, you had talked with him and worked with him, 
that you were the one that really enlightened him that he was a producer when he didn't realize he was producing. So right. how, how and why did you and Cool V connect so well and you helped him out, ended up doing a lot of stuff with him? Oh, well, Biz was nice to me. So Biz was like one of the first people to give me, actually give me money for my music. So we got, we got you know, close from that. And yeah, like it was only a few, a few hundred bucks, but that was, it was more than, when you just start, that's a lot of money. Right. When you just start, that's kind of a lot of money. And, but I had to call up Marley to let Marley know, look, I didn't tell him, you know, and you know, yeah, because, yeah, I call up Marley to, to let him know that I didn't tell V that you took advantage of him or anything, you know, because basically somebody said that to me. Somebody said, Mark, um, yeah, I, I heard an interview with you where you was telling Vaughn, you was telling Vaughn that Marley didn't send it to you. Hey, wait a minute. Let me get Marley on the phone and tell him. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. A 19, I got a fifty thousand dollar car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, Bob, on your TV basketball? Yo MTV has just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.